What's up guys, so we're gonna, today we're going to be making a documentary and a highlight reel about Tyrell Biggs. He was a uh, mid-1980s to the late 1990s contender. He started his pro, pro debut against Mike Evans, which is shown here. He's getting ready for the fight. He has his corner, and then he was pretty humble. He trained hard for this fight. Um, So... He, this was his first fight, I think, against Mike Evans. Mike Evans is 3-1 and one with one draw. Mike Evans has had five fights. He's a pretty good journeyman. But um, during this fight, most of the time, Tyler Biggs was just fighting Mike Evans, who Mike Evans was just doing more of a offensive guard. Also, this is Tyler Biggs Jr., Tyler Biggs' son. This is Tyler Biggs against Francesco Domin... <laughs> I can't pronounce his name, da Damiani, I think. He looks kind of like Rocky Balboa for some reason. Oh yeah, he also fought Teofilo Stevenson here. So, I'm gonna actually gonna cut to the part where he uh, fought Mike Evans real quick, because I don't want you guys to just be waiting here. Okay, this is footage of when he fought um, Mike Evans, and this is his pro debut. This is the introduction, how you rate type well Biggs versus Mike Evans. And this is Tyler Biggs being introduced. I want to make the audio where you can hear him. Sleeveless shirt. Eight ounce thunderous gloves. Listen, his age is 23. His height is 6'4 and 3 fours. And my guy my wasn't even introduced in this fight. There's a massive height difference. Tyler Biggs is what, like 6'4, six, 6'5, six, I think. I've been just probably like I won't. Six one, I think maybe who knows? Probably six one and a half, I'm guessing. I just touched gloves, gloves for the fight. This is two twenty three. Evans is two twenty five. No, Evans is six two. What happened? What is, what, what happened? What, what's happening? Uh, the full screen isn't. Uh, um. I guess I'll just do the video like this, um, because we've gone a bit far, so, uh, ignore the stuff at the bottom. What did I just click? Okay, I fixed this. This is footage of the fight, um, how Biggs versus Mike Evans. Right now, they're, um, doing pretty good. Biggs is just taunting him because Evans is just in a guard most of the fight. Barely threw any punches, which kind of aggravated Biggs. It's the final six round of the fight. Set up for six. Yeah, Evans kind of annoyed Big Biggs in this fight. This is a fight that Biggs went the distance with for pretty long time. Had a bunch of knockouts after this, but then he um kind of fell off after the Tyson fight, which I'll show you after this. Now after this, I'll show you probably the Jeff Sims fight because that one was actually one of my favorite fights. What the uh? No, I'll actually show you all the um. One of my favorite fights when he fought uh, James Quick Tillis. You can see he's using the jab to mainly keep Evans at bay. It's kind of. Evans has good. He's a defensive fighter, practically. But Biggs is kind of controlling the whole fight. Just jabbing him. Alright, this is footage of when he fought James Quick Tillis. Tyrell Biggs is in, has the white trunks with the blue stripe. Right now, Big, um, Tillis is kind of on the attack using his hands to kind of keep Tyrell Biggs. Now use the jab. James Tillis is also using some good footwork. I want to fight James Tillis, but I do think that Biggs won this fight. And the, Biggs got the decision anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I hope you just keep on watching this fight because it's actually pretty good. For a first round, this is actually kind of exciting. James Tillis, as you saw there, got a pretty light, pretty good white cross in. Both right now are just doing kind of a feel out. Things just kind of staying on the defensive while using some offense. Very good slip by Biggs there. This is kind of using his jab while Tillis backs up. Right here is probably a feel out, but a pretty good feel out actually, because they're both still falling explosive. 
I probably think this one right now is going for Tillis because Tillis is landing the um more explosive bomb. So um, Dix is simply just like using his jab. Right there, um, Dix got a pretty good jab. Dix looked that left hook pretty good. What just go? I got confused for a second there. Here, Biggs is kind of staying on the defensive, kind of. Right here. This is a pretty good first round. Once again, Tills actually gets in a good right hand on Biggs. Biggs is simply backing up, getting some hit by some pretty good uh, right hands by Tillis. T Tillis is pretty confident in this first round because he knows he's winning it. I do think Tillis definitely won this round. Well, if there was a referee who did not give this round to Tillis, then um, I want to I want to speak to him deeply. It's kind of stupid. If this is not the first round, and yo, know, it's actually pretty good. It's probably one of the best first rounds in the weight division. Not the best, but one of the good first rounds. There's a pretty good feel. The end was pretty explosive with Quick Tillis going with a bunging my right hand. That was the um, second round, I think, now. Or is this just a weak one? Probably just a weak one. I'll move on to when Biggs fought, I think, Jeff Sims? Yeah, Jeff Sims. Well, it's probably one of my favorite fights by Biggs, actually. These are the highlighted moments between Tyrell Biggs and Jeff Sims. Jeff Sims was probably one of the toughest men that Biggs fought. I know because of Jeff Sims' punching power, and Sims was a pretty good boxer with good, good chin. Sims had actually gone five rounds with Ernie Shavers before this fight and lost by TKO. He did deck Shavers with a very good white hand in that fight. Right now, Biggs is slipping very well because he has to be very defensive in this fight because he knows that Jeff Sims is a power puncher and he definitely knows it in the second round because. Wait, I think. Wait, that's when, um. Biggs broke his collarbone when he got hit in the shoulder against the ropes. You can tell because he's no longer using his right hand as much. He won the decision, surprisingly. I actually thought that um Sims would win in the sixth round by knockout before I watched the fight, but then after the uh like fourth round, I realized that Biggs was winning on the scorecards and was going to probably win the decision. And after the eighth round, I was very confident at it, actually. I had it seven to three in favor of Biggs. That's a good because it was it was a close fight in my opinion. I had it seven to three only because of how Tyrell Biggs was slipping most of the punches and he was actually using more effective punches that were landing. Probably the only reason why. The fit, yeah, there's when that's the round that I didn't give um Biggs. I think it was actually a slip though. I'm not sure. It looked like a slip, but it, was, it might have been a knockdown. I don't know. I counted as a slip, but I thought it was a knockdown at first. After that, Big starts dancing on the wing, like all he was. Slipping punches actually very well here, didn't he? This one surprises because Big weighs like 228 in this fight, I think, or 230. I'm not sure. Oh, he weighs two. He, he definitely weighs more than 220, so he's pretty good on his feet for someone who weighs around 228 or 230. I could check, but I'm not, because then I have to, like, make effectively it takes too long. Boxing record like, takes a while to load for me for some reason. My computer's kind of laggy. This is a six round. Pretty explosive, actually. This is my favorite round of the fight. Bigs are just dancing in the corner, slipping. It's a very white, good white cross by um Sims. Sims trying to use the jab. Most of the times, the reason I gave most of the rounds to Biggs was because of how much of the punches that Biggs was just slipping. But all, a lot of power punches were getting through Biggs' guard. Biggs here gets caught with a good body shot on the left hook to the chin. Getting pounded at his midsection. This is probably why he um was... Probably slowing down at the end of the fight. He actually didn't slow down in the 10th round, though. He was still doing pretty good. This was probably the most explosive final seconds for a round. 
and takes his back off, uses his jab. You know, like, this is probably one of my favorite, but underrated fights, boxing. He makes was pretty proud of his win. And this is a slow on his fight. This is where he, um, this is why I said he broke his collarbone, I think. Yeah, right there. Oh, as you can tell, because how the way he, like, steps forward away from him. This is Tyrell Biggs versus Mike Tyson in the seventh round. This is his cornerman speaking to him after the sixth round. Cornerman's just jabbing at him like a, a million miles per hour, practically. This was Biggs' first loss and defeat. So he puts his mouthpiece and he gets ready to face Tyson for the final round of the fight. Seventh round, not the final round. Gets knocked out, so you kind of get the point. Biggs is on the defense, trying to use the Philly show. He gets caught with the left hook. I think his mouthpiece went out. I looked like I'm not sure. This is backing up here. This is Chad Tyson's punishing him with body shots. It's probably prime Mike Tyson, even though I'm on a documentary about Biggs. I think Tyson's prime was around 87 or 88. Biggs is getting caught with a bunch of left hooks to his chin and short punches to his stomach, which are clearly taking a toll on him, because usually in the late rounds he bounces. Here he's not bouncing as much. He's just trying to stay away. Tyson's moving in, cutting off the wing to get to Biggs, and Biggs just gets in that clinch and flashes Tyson to back up. I'm telling you, someone was probably the best year for Tyson. The only reason I didn't wait like it was because Bone Crusher Smith was backing up most of the time in their fight. It was a good fight, but just Bone Crusher Smith lost like 10 to 2 fights a week because he was just backing up so much. And Biggs is caught with another big body shot and a left hook right to the liver, which probably put him down because a liver shot can actually do pretty a lot of damage, but heavyweights take a liver shot pretty well. That's just being delivered by Mike Tyson, so it's actually surprising that he didn't fall from that. But now, um, they got in a quench for a second there. Kind of back up, and he's getting caught. There's a lot of quenching in this fight, the seventh round. Because Biggs is, like, kind of bloodied up, and his eyes are kind of swollen. Using the jab to try to keep Tyson away. With a good white hand against the ropes. And goes with the quench. Tyson touches um Biggs's glove when he when he jabs. Biggs against the ropes. Tyson has his hands up and Tyson hits Biggs with a white a uh, short cross to the body and then a left hook to the nose, I think. No, I couldn't really tell. Tyson moves in, catches him with a good left hook and then Another left hook, and then down Biggs went through the ropes. You can tell Biggs is kind of beat up in this fight. He has like a cut on his eye, and his, ah, his other eye has like a bit of a bruise near his nose. Got up, we looked him pretty good after he got up. Then he just gets not left right hand, left hook, few shots of the body. Probably a good call from the left away here, because he is when. Tyson was throwing punches, they just didn't really get spawned that well. So footage of when, um, so a big spot, Lennox Lewis. Next, I could show Lennox Bow, but that fight's kind of long, so I'm not going to always show the whole thing. This is the, um, eighth round of Biggs versus Lennox Big Daddy Bow. This is a pretty good fight. Here, Biggs is. This is the eighth and final round. Biggs is using his jab to keep Bo away. Bo gets a right hand in and base to the body. Biggs is actually doing pretty well against Bo, even though he is. He kind of fell off after the Tyson loss. Still, pretty, he's effectively keeping Bo off with the jab. He slipped the right hand there and took a left hook. Here he's getting pinned near the ropes, getting hit by left hook, right hands. Another left jab by Bo. Another left jab. Biggs fights back with his own left jab of his own. Biggs caught Bo with a pretty good white hand there. 
Now one to the to his limbs or jab, uppercut. Biggs actually looked pretty good here. I actually thought he was he when he was winning the eighth round before he got KO'd in it. This is sixth round. I'm not sure. He is doing pretty good though in this round. Oh, goes with the right hand, but Biggs once again slips it. It's actually doing kind of good here. I think if Biggs was in his prime, he probably would have went the full round, 10, 12 rounds, or 10 rounds, I don't know. Remember what it was scheduled for, as long as it was scheduled more than, um, I think, 8, then he would have gone the distance. There was something it was scheduled for 15, he would have gone knocked off, of course, but there was no 15 rounders in the 90s. With the jab, digs deep to the body, backs away, uh, two jabs. With the white cross, left hook, uppercut. Better light like cross. Oh, right now is digging deep to the body against Biggs. Biggs is laying against the ropes, trying not to um get knocked out. Actually, he thought that Biggs won this round, definitely. Six round is a great round for Biggs. So my voice sounds kind of deep. I had a voice crack there for a second. And the Biggs is kind of deep there. And let's skip to the eighth round where Biggs was a knockdown. Okay, this is footage of the eighth round when he fought Bo. He's doing quite good, keeping Bo away with this jab. Even though he got knocked on his side, he was doing good before the knockdown. This is a, was a pretty brutal knockout, too. So, Tyro Biggs is trying to stay away with his jab. He's bouncing on his feet, kind of like how all we used to do. I'm keeping Bo away with that jab, putting the jab in his face by the way. Then Biggs deep Biggs went a bit deep to the stomach there. Biggs is actually doing good before the um knock out. Go with a left hook. Jabs back. After the two minute mark, um it's all a go, see? Bo's getting um Bo's getting hit by pretty um good what left jabs by uh Biggs. As soon as Biggs gets near the ropes, like near the corner, that's when Bo Bo starts to dominate. Bo puts in some good left jabs. They're both they both dug pretty deep to the body in this fight. I actually had it four I think I had it like five three in favor of Tyrell Biggs coming into this round. I had it fourth I, I said it wrong. Yeah, as soon as Biggs gets near the um corner, he's hanging pile it up. Go with the white claws, left claws. Then look, he gets near the corner, and this is where it, it all kind of ends. Can I hit by white claws, and then there, and there he goes. He did get up a lot, though. He just took a few seconds. He couldn't recover from getting knocked down though, because after that he just gets bombarded by a bunch of shots. He gets hit the, against the ropes. It's knocked down. Yeah, it's waved off. That was a good call from the left wing. Good, good fight for both too. Good knockout. I'm gonna cut to the uh, one x Lewis fight. Yeah, Bo, he got hit hard. Biggs did. This fight, I'm gonna skip to the lowest fight after this. Alright, this is footage of Tyrell Biggs versus Manix Lewis in, I think it was in 1991 or 1990, I'm not sure. I do know Biggs is 30 here and Lewis is 26. Lewis is getting some good jabs and then crosses on um, Biggs. Biggs backs up, has his hands up, pounded out against the ropes. I think Biggs won this song. Um, well, Biggs, so I don't think Biggs didn't want a round. He didn't get it in the second. He did pretty good in the second round, and that was all he did. Yeah. They're both kind of staying defensive. My next one was Biggs deep with a uh, 
kidney shot, I think. Well, to the lip cage of the kidney. Then what next to this, you get to the jab. I kind of forgot that this fight was coming up on the same day. My phone versus Henry Cooper. Well, not Henry Cooper, I forget his name. But it's first pass, pass name is Cooper, though. Next was this is the final round of the fight, the third round. This is jab, try to stay away. Next was swing, say left jab. Trying to keep Biggs away, but it's like There's the white hand that did it. That was probably. He gets decked again. I always knew that after a knockdown that um, Biggs couldn't do well. I don't think as much as a bad beating he did from uh, Tyson, though. That was a pretty brutal knockdown, though. The final one. Gets caught by the white hand and folds up, kind of. I think it's just Kawhi got ruined after the Tyson loss, I think. This was a good moment for Lewis, though. He avenged a loss from the amateur career, so that was pretty good. Well, that's gonna end the, um, doc the uh, documentary, folks. I got this footage of Tyler Biggs bouncing in the lane from when he fought David Bay. I hope you guys enjoyed this documentary and highlight of Tyler Biggs. Next, I'll probably do a uh, edit of Tyler Biggs. I'm gonna try to make one. I don't know. Maybe I'll do one. Also, a quick um, quick uh, I forgot what I was gonna say, but get the point. Um, I was gonna say that Tybal Biggs is also one of the was the only fighter to fight Francesco Dom Damiani and no 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 not, not Francesco Damiani uh Teofio Stevenson in the amateurs and then fight Wenex who is Mike Tyson and Wenex Bull in the pro date in the pros he was definitely one of the best fighters of his um era one of the best he was probably one of the top ten best before he lost to Tyson. Well, that's the end of the documentary. Hope you guys have a good day, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Peace.